As Boeing continues to face scrutiny with the 737 MAX program and the fleet of aircraft that have already been delivered to airlines being grounded following the crash of ET-302 earlier this year in March, there hasn't been much good news for the 737 MAX program until recently at the Dubai Air Show where the Boeing company secured new orders for the 737 MAX. And while airlines are not flying the 737 MAX, workers at Boeing's facilities, especially the one at Renton, Washington, has been working to address the issues including the MCAS, the central focal point of the scrutiny of the 737 MAX. As the MAX 8 and MAX 9 aircraft remain grounded, Boeing recently rolled out the newest version of the aircraft, the MAX 10, which happens to be the largest variant of the 737 family of aircraft. While the MAX 10 will keep the same wingspan length as its predecessors, it will feature a longer fuselage with a maximum capacity of 230 passengers. While it will be offering more capacity, it does have a drawback compared to the MAX 8 and 9 with its range reduced by 200 nautical miles compared to the MAX 8 and 9 at around 3,300 nautical miles. This stretch variant of the 737 MAX will have two new features on the aircraft that no other 737 aircraft currently has. The first will be a new pair of emergency exits after the wing section, which will still have the four emergency exits over the wings. This is understandable especially for the narrow body aircraft with added capacity to allow for easier evacuation in the event of an emergency. And it happens to be a design feature that also is on the A321 XLR. The other feature is probably the most fascinating as it addresses concerns of a possible tail strike due to the longer fuselage while ensuring the landing gear fits within the wheel bay of the aircraft. Boeing engineers devised a new lever that would allow the aircraft to have its wheels at the same height while on the ground, but could extend as the aircraft was lifting off. While it may be questionable whether to integrate it into a 737, this is not the first time any aircraft has been using this method to provide extra height in between takeoffs and touchdowns. And an example of this is the stretched version of the 777, the 777-300. While I have no expertise in aviation engineering, I looked into YouTube and found Captain Joe's video titled, Why is the landing gear tilted? Where he explains why some large aircraft have their landing gear tilted forward or backwards to minimize the wheelbase space so other features such as fuel tanks could be added on the aircraft. But the part to take note is during the last part where he's explaining the semi-levered gear strut works to do a similar effect for the 777-300 which is longer than the 777-200. If you want to watch this video, Captain Joe's video will be linked in the description below. With the technical issue said, Boeing is looking to sell the aircraft as a competitor to the Airbus A321neo and for current Boeing 737 next generation operators an added range of around 400 nautical miles. Now depending on the recertification of the 737 MAX program, Boeing is looking to launch the aircraft in 2020. And so far the aircraft manufacturing company has received over 550 orders for the MAX 10, with United Airlines being the largest airline company who has ordered the MAX 10. United's order is followed by Vietjet with 80 and Lion Air with 50 of the aircraft. Other Asia Pacific customers include Fly Dubai, Malaysia Airlines, OK Airways, and Xiamen Air. For Boeing, the 737 MAX was really to play catch up with Airbus's updates with the A320 and the A321. And compared to the rest of the 737 MAX family of aircraft, the number of orders for the MAX 10 is a small part of the over 4,000 backlog in orders for the rest of the 737 MAX 8 and 9 aircraft. With the selling points of fuel efficiency and higher capacity, this could be an aircraft that would be offered to airlines operating high capacity routes already using Boeing 737s, especially the next generation aircraft, such as the Dash 800 and the Dash 900. Though it could also be argued that airlines who have ordered the MAX 8 and 9 probably don't need this aircraft at all. Also, Boeing is facing an uphill battle with the MAX 10 and the MAX overall, with the technical issues and the current groundings, as well as the Airbus A321, which Boeing has stated the MAX 10 will compete against, has been proven to be a popular aircraft, with around 3,000 orders that have been placed to date. While there's a small difference in the capacity offered between the two aircraft, 
The A321neo offers a longer range of 4,000 nautical miles, which has made it appealing for those airlines who want to use narrow-body aircraft on long-range flights using aircraft like the 757. And some are discussing that Boeing should focus on its new mid-size aircraft concept as a way to counter the A321 and the XLR. So where does this leave the 737 program? A program with a 50-year legacy on par with the likes of the 747. With its often criticized use of an old design, with a larger but more powerful engine, the future replacement for the 737 could come from its deal with Embraer with the E-Jets, a deal that is currently now under pending review from the European Union. But with an 80% stake in the company, Boeing would be able to market and sell the E-Jets as its own, similar to how Airbus is marketing the former C-Series, the A220, and will probably have more development and marketing control compared to Airbus and its 50% stake in Bombardier's commercial aircraft business. With all this said, the ongoing grounding and the process to fix the issues with the MAX aircraft masks a much larger picture of the interaction that Boeing has with engineers as well as the airlines that it's currently in discussions with. And some airlines are probably hesitating to place orders right now given the current state of the situation. So the real verdict on the future and the fate of the 737 program and the legacy of the popular aircraft will rest heavily on the ability of Boeing to fix and address the problems in a bid to appeal to skeptical airlines as well as the overall public. What are your thoughts on the competitive prospects for the Boeing 737 MAX 10? And what is your take on the future of the Boeing 737 family and the legacy of the aircraft beyond the 737 MAX? Thank you for watching. This has been another edition of Flights in Asia, highlighting the news and updates from the aviation and travel scene from the Asia Pacific. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching and have a great day.